Hi, I'm Phil Constantine. This is Travels with Phil, and on this video, we're doing some more Cherokee sites that I haven't done individual videos for. These are all in Tennessee. They include Sequoia's Birthplace, Hiawassee Weir, Tennessee and Chota Old Towns, Red Clay Park, and the first one is the Cherokee Removal Memorial Park. This is at Blythe's Ferry. It was operated by William Blythe starting in 1809. Well, nine of the 13 detachments under Chief Ross came through here during the Trail of Tears. And uh, he actually left, Blythe left, with his wife because she was Cherokee. Travels with Phil continues. This is Blythe Ferry, Tennessee, or as it's sometimes called the Cherokee Removal Memorial Site. What you're seeing below us here is a map here that shows quite a few of the uh, routes traveled by the uh, Trail of Tears to get over to Oklahoma, or Indian Territory, as it was. If you notice here on the map, I'll try to zoom in. It's a little hard for me to see out here because of the glare. Uh, right there is Blythe's Ferry. And that's not where I am right now. It's a pretty large site. Lots of material out here on the ground. Lots of things to look at. With a lot of the uh, places here in Tennessee, they are not open much during the week. The Interpretative Center is uh, open Wednesdays through Saturdays. At least it was when I showed up on uh, May the 16th. 2016, Blythe Ferry. And all of these spots are in the southwestern part of Tennessee. All right, we are at the overlook over the river here at Blythe Ferry in the uh, Cherokee Removal Memorial Park. You can see the river out there in the distance through the trees here. Lots of trees up in this spot. There is a spot where here you can come up and look at the river down below and see the distance that people had to travel as they came through. Looks very nice now. Of course, you know, 1838, people weren't worried so much about what was going on as far as the uh, scenery was concerned. It was uh, being moved across. And uh, quite a few people died during the trip. It's uh, surprising. Most people think they died on the trip. Well, actually, most of them died in the stockades before they actually made it to the trip itself, to the Trail of Tears. It was as they were being held in the, for lack of a better term, concentration camps. Now, across the river here in a couple of spots, move over a little bit, and you can see where there are, uh, there's a uh, marina out there on a little spit. See if I can zoom in a little bit. There you go. Out there, some homes on the far side of the river. So nowadays, by modern standards, this is a very pretty place. Blythe Ferry area, one of the places where the Cherokees had to cross the river, Tennessee. Uh, one of the signs out here says 2,000 people died in the camps, 1,500 on the trip. Now this is video three from Blythe Landing. These are some. Uh, engravings of the people who came through here. It says the 1835 Cherokee Nation census. Henderson roll was taken to identify those who were to be removed and the value of their property. Heads of households were arranged in alphabetical order by state, followed by the numbers of Cherokees, whites, and slaves. Cherokee names appear in capital letters. Traditional Western and Westernized Native American names appear in lower cases. And uh, there are quite a few out here. I'm going to walk around just a little bit. I know I was very touched. I mean, it's not the content per se. It's not the the way that they say it. It's just that I found family names out here myself of my own family that uh, had uh, come across the trail. But you see some of those names, Doublehead, right in here. Uh, lots of them. Six killer. Lots and lots of names out here. Old Soap. And I have a relative by the name of Young Pig. And then in the other, another part of the family, in my case, is the Walking Sticks and the Adairs. So lots of people out here. It can be a very touching, sad moment if you come out here to see this. This is again the Blythe Ferry Landing the Cherokee Removal Memorial Site off of Birchwood or out of Birchwood in Tennessee. Come like I did today, you have the entire place to yourself. 
So this is a very interesting spot. Again, this is a view of the uh, map of the Trail of Tears routes that some of the folks took. Uh, the waters were very low there, so some folks had to camp there for six months. All right, moving over to Sequoia's birthplace. By the way, I have all of these pictures on my website. Lots, lots, and lots of pictures on my website. Just go to travelswithphil.com, scroll down to where it says Tennessee, and then you can pick on the individual ones here so you can see some of the uh, pictures themselves, uh, fairly large and very high-quality high pictures as well. Uh, the Sequoia's birthplace had a very nice museum museum and uh, it's a very nicely uh, kept grounds uh, lots of different artifacts there as well let's go to one of the videos I took out there travels with Phil continue with a very quick walk through of the Sequoia birthplace museum now one thing you should know is if you come through here that his birthplace is not here it's in the relatively close by area and the house that they have here according to the person working in the front area is uh, not his house and uh, also according to the uh, woman at the front desk they say that soon the uh, property will be returned to the eastern band and they will actually have it uh, uh, in uh, ownership of it but they do have lots and lots of displays here interesting comments and again you can put this on pause and try to read some of these there's two cultures, two views. And show you some more over here. This is all part of a moving exhibition. Part of the uh, going to London, traveling about. Lots of videos going on the entire time. Some actual artifacts. I like the beadwork over here. That's very nice. Some original pots from the 1700s that were recovered. Then they also have a lot of material here on Sequoia. Teleco block, block House, which I hope to go to. More about uh, Sequoia himself. The infamous picture. No. 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 More over there. A diorama, supposedly, of him. TV programs about the Cherokees that are being played on a regular basis. Leaders around. Maps are showing where everybody came from, where they went, where they stayed. More displays here, current days, Fort Loudon, which is just around the corner, and then one of the meeting rooms that they have here. And the clan masks. And this is a quick look at the Cherokee Sequoia Birthplace Museum. Fort Loudon and Teleco Blockhouse are not too far from here. I have separate videos for those, so you can go check out that on my YouTube channel. Here's another video f from Sequoia. Travels with Phil continues at the Sequoia Birthplace Museum. One thing they do have here that is legitimate is a memorial. Actually, not a memorial. Uh, it's a burial spot for all the bones that have been discovered or were dug up during the creation of the lakes and the rivers around here. It says the principal people in memory of the Cherokee people who lived in the Little Tennessee Valley prior to the inundation of the Teleco Reservoir, Reservoir in 1979. Archaeological investigations were conducted at the major 18th century Cherokee sites. The remains of 191 individuals recovered in those excavations are buried in this mound. So that's the main part in the front. And then the diagrams off to the left are the. Uh, Signs of the clans plus the seal of the Cherokee Nation. All right, the next spot is an ancient Hiwassee River fishing weir. And I uh, have some uh, pictures here. As you come in, there's a little uh, fort uh, outside. This shows you roughly where it's at. And uh, this is basically an ancient site that people have been living here for uh, quite some time, at least using the area. Here's a video I shot while out there. Travels with Phil continues. I'm at the Hiwassee Okoe River State Park uh, that's, uh, well, a little bit north of Benton. 
And uh, this is an area where uh, some of the Cherokees uh, lived around here and at one point. They also have an old fort that was one of the forts that was used uh, during the removal process here, although it was uh, originally located about 20 miles south. All right, you're looking at a weir, uh, this triangular shape uh, piece of rock out there in the, in the river. This was used to uh, funnel the fish, channel the fish into a smaller area so they could get down in there and easily catch them as they came down the river. Now, the signs out here at the park say that this may have been here before the Cherokees got here, but still an interesting uh, uh, formation out here. And uh, indeed, the Cherokees did use it when they eventually came into the area, but uh, it's a nice uh, looking river. They're, they're telling me that the river is low right now, and that's why you're able to actually see uh, the weir out there uh, that uh, channels the fish into one small area, making it easier to just bend over and grab them. All right, the next town we go to is Tennessee, or Tennessee. It's uh, here in the state of Tennessee. There's a nice uh, marker there out front going to the video. About 12 miles down the same road that took you to the Sequoia birthplace is the site, or at least a memorial, for the uh, village called Tennessee. Now you notice, Tennessee sounds a whole lot like Tennessee. Well, that's where Tennessee came from, according to the folks that uh, know such stuff. And, uh, by the way, uh, when I said it's 12 miles down from the Sequoia Museum, uh, incidentally, if you are a Cherokee citizen, you get in free to the museum. I'll show you this uh, monument here. It says, uh, Tennessee, capital of the Cherokee Nation, 1721 to 1730, origin of the name for the state of Tennessee. It says, the site of the former town of Tennessee, now underwater, is located about 30 yards west of this marker. Tennessee, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, attained political prominence in 1721 when its civil chief was elected the first emperor of the Cherokee Nation. <clears throat> about the same time, the town name was... Uh, also applied to the river of which it is located during the mid 18th century Tennessee became overshadowed and eventually absorbed by the adjacent town of Choda Which was to the immediate north the first recorded spelling of Tennessee as it is today occurred on uh, It or lieutenant uh, Henry Timberlake's map of 1762 in 1796 the name Tennessee was selected from among several as the most appropriate for the nation's a 16th state, therefore, symbolized by this monument. Those who reside in this beautiful state are forever linked to this Cherokee heritage. It is pretty. Very nice. All right, the next place we're going to is one of the old Cherokee towns uh, called Choda. And go out to the video out there. Now, uh, Choda was one of the Overhill Cherokee towns. It's located in Monroe County, Tennessee. That's uh, southeastern uh, United States, and it's in the southwestern part of uh, Tennessee, not too far from Tennessee. It was uh, pretty much occupied 1740s until about 1788. It was about the most important of the Overhill towns, and it became the de facto uh, capital at one point. Uh, quite a few uh, Cherokee leaders were born or lived in this particular area, including was uh, Atacula Kula. Okonostota, Old Hop, Old Tassel, Hanging Ma, and even beloved woman Nancy Warder believed to have all been uh, born in this particular area. The audio wasn't working on the video, uh, so uh, I'm uh, doing voice over here, so obviously my lips aren't matching up. Uh, they have some very nice uh, markers out here, uh, some of the uh, clan markers that are available out here. Obviously, it's right next to the river. Now, several of these spots out here, uh, they uh, the original spots are underwater because they made lakes. You can see here the, the uh, uh, grave marker of Okono Osta, and uh, my pronunciation is bad, by the way. I always I always admit to that, so don't go by me when it comes to pronunciations. But it is a very nice spot. I can imagine it gets a bit humid at times out there, but uh, I can uh, see why the Cherokees like to live out here. Here are some of the markers out there for. Uh, the various clan markers and other uh, indications out there for uh, different things. And uh, it's an interesting spot. So Tennessee and Chota are right next to each other on the same road out there. Next place we're going to is the Red Clay Park. This was the last uh, Cherokee Council site uh, before the removal was going on. This is just a rock's throw. Well, literally, it actually does cross the border between Tennessee and Georgia. So this is also in the south and southwestern part of Tennessee. Here's the video I shot out there. Travels with Phil continues from Red Clay Park in Tennessee. This is the last council area, or capital, I guess, if you want to call it that, of the Cherokees uh, before the uh, Trail of Tears. Uh, it's a uh, fairly large park just north of the Georgia-Tennessee line, a little bit uh, east of Chattanooga. 
Right here next to me, this is the eternal flame of the Cherokee Nation. The marker on the top says, eternal flame of the Cherokee Nation. This fire is a memorial to those people who suffered and died on the infamous Trail of Tears. It also commemorates the reuniting of the Eastern and Western Cherokee Nations here at Red Clay. Dated from August 7th, 1837 through April 6th, 1984. All right, so the museum was closed when I was there, so you don't see any pictures inside. We are still here at Red Clay. I am, not we. And this is a nice uh, sculpture work of the various clans. I'm going to walk all the way around it. Forgive me if this video shakes. I don't have a steady cam. And showing the seven clans. I don't have steady hands either. I like it. The one with the red there, if you can't read it, is paint. And that's wolf right there. Wild potato. And the blue one is blue, appropriately enough. All right, let's move over to one of the other spots. Travels with Phil, number three from Red Clay Park. This is a... A recreation or reconstruction of the uh, Red Clay Council. Read what it says here. Uh, the Between 1828 and 1830, Georgia passed laws prohibiting the Cherokee from meeting for any purpose other than to sign a treaty giving up their land. The council that had been a meeting in the Cherokee capital, New Echota, Georgia, met once in Alabama in 1831, then moved here to Red Clay in 1832. The council met here until just before the removal in 1838. And what it says here is that this is a uh, reconstruction based on uh, the only uh, uh, eyewitness report of the structure, which identified it as a simple parallelogram formed of logs with open sides with benches for the councilors. Uh, they've done some investigations out here and can't really determine exactly where the council house was, but they think it might have been larger than this, but this is a fairly good size. But again, this is a reconstruction of what was thought to be uh, the design for the uh, council here in Red Clay, Tennessee. One of the reasons for the site being here is because of a nearby spring. Let's go over to that video. Travels with Phil continues here at uh, Red Clay Park. This is Blue Hole Spring. It's a spring right there in front of you. Turn around slowly and go around to the other side and you'll be able to see the uh, spring moving along into the wilderness there. And not quite wilderness, but the woods at least. There you go. And according to the signs up on top, it was believed that this is where the water came from that uh, was used by the various councils. Uh, the signs up there say that this was from uh, 19, or 1832 through 1837, I believe is uh, what the date was. And again, this is up at uh, Red Clay Park, just uh, on the uh, northern edge of the Tennessee-Georgia border, a little bit uh, east of Chattanooga. Very peaceful spot out here. I had a little sip of the water. Not bad. Thank you very much for watching this video. Please feel free to leave comments down below as long as the language is family friendly. And if you would like to subscribe to my channel, just click on the button over on the right hand side. Thank you very much.